I always choose different from opinion. Why is it important to learn the difference between truth and opinion? I am Teacher Jay. Join me in this vlog as we try to answer these questions. In the previous discussion, we've learned Rorty's perspective that for something to be considered as true, it needs to pass procedures of justification. We've also learned that truth has three domains, namely scientific, social, and personal domain. While it is important to grasp the various approaches to truth, it is also vital to understand how to distinguish truth from opinion. Now, what is opinion? Opinion is a view or judgment of a person or group of people about something, but not necessarily true. While some opinions are weak and easy to refute, other opinions are very strong. Strong in the sense that most people subscribe to those opinions as something true. With that, it is therefore necessary for us to critically examine whether an argument is true or just a mere opinion. Again, before something can be considered true, it must go through justification procedures. Therefore, if an opinion has passed the justification procedures, it can be considered true. If a person wishes to demonstrate that his argument is more than just an opinion, but rather something true, he must prove his argument. Now, what exactly is argument? An argument is defined as a set of statements that serve to support a conclusion. If someone says, I'm going to win in Suertres Lotto today, that is not an argument, but rather a mere opinion. To be considered an argument, the person making the claim must be able to provide reasons to back up his claim. As a result, an argument looks like this. Last Sunday night, I dreamed of winning the Suertas Lotto, and the next day, I bet and won. Last night, I had another dream about winning the Suertas Lottery. Therefore, I'm going to win today. In the example I gave, the person is claiming that he will win the Suertas Lotto, and he backs up his claim by citing the fact that the last time he dreamed of winning the Suertas Lotto, he actually did. However, we must await the outcome of the Suertas Lotto draw to determine the validity of the claim. Clearly, not all arguments are valid. Moreover, as I previously stated, there are some opinions that others hold to be true, even though they are not. We can be easily deceived and persuaded by incorrect arguments if we are not cautious when evaluating them. To avoid being easily persuaded by fallacious arguments, we must study logic, the branch of philosophy that studies and elaborates on good argumentation. In logic, arguments that appear to be sound or valid but are fundamentally flawed are referred to as fallacies. Allow me to give you a few examples of fallacies so that we can better understand them. Argumentum ad hominem or argument against a person is one of the fallacies. This is a fallacy that is used when people persuade others that someone's argument should be rejected because of the person's personal background. This argument is fallacious because the truth or falsity of a claim should not be influenced by the background of the person making it. Example, 
When politician A accuses politician B of corruption, the latter responds by telling the public not to accept the accusation because the former knows nothing about governance and can't even handle his own mess. Instead of realizing that politician B's response to politician A should be in line with the corruption argument, rather than attacking the person's credibility, many people may simply accept politician B's claim as true. By saying things like, yes, it is true, politician A knows nothing about politics because he is just a high school graduate. Let's face it. Many of us subscribe to this line of reasoning. Question is, are you one of them? Argumentum ad baculum, or the appeal to force, is another example of fallacy. This is a strategy adopted by persons who wish to win an argument by threatening their opponents. For example, let's say you're the most attractive girl in town with several suitors. Your boyfriend is head over heels in love with you and has proposed to you. You replied with a no and stated that you were not ready yet. In response, he threatened you and said he will mess up your life and your family. Some individuals may agree with your boyfriend's decision because of the fear of losing you. For them, the argument may appear to be valid. but it's a fallacy because, rather than persuading you by listing the benefits of marrying him, he instead threatened you. Next will be argumentum ad misericordiam, or appeal to pity. This fallacy is also known as the appeal to emotion. It's an argument employed by people who wish to manipulate people's emotions to gain their favor. A passive student, for example, who is unconcerned with academic assignments, submissions, and requirements may approach you at the end of the grading period and say, Sir, ma'am, please let me pass. I'm having a lot of troubles in life. Have pity on me. If the teacher does not utilize his reason, the student may persuade him or her out of pity. He or she will allow the student to pass the subject even though it will be unfair to the other students who, despite their own difficulties, give it their best. What makes it fallacious is that instead of just explaining why the student was inactive, the student used pity to appeal to the teacher. Argumentum ad populum or bandwagon fallacy, is the last example I will give you. It's a fallacious argument that assumes something is true because the majority believes it is. For example, the majority of your classmates are cheaters. If you don't think holistically, you can be persuaded to do the same thing because the rest of your classmates do it and get good grades. However, just because everyone is doing something doesn't mean it's right or moral. As the famous dictum goes, what is right is right even if nobody is doing it. What is wrong is wrong even if everybody is doing it. To synthesize, opinions are statements of judgment of a person or a group of people. We should not take them immediately as true. We should always critically examine the opinion and its supporting arguments. Because if not, we will immediately be deceived of what we see, hear, and consider them factual. Worst thing is, we will subscribe to those wrong beliefs and opinions and close our doors to learning, knowing, and living what is true. Thank you for accompanying me on this topic. I hope that you have learned something and consider those learnings as something relevant. Once again, I am Teacher Jay and see you in the next vlogs. Thank you and God bless everyone.